Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to our YouTube channel um, and we at Tools for Life are really grateful to have you back with us. We had uh, promised to do a video on contraception and today we are going to be discussing the implant which is one of the progesterone based uh, contraceptives. So basically we have two types of contraceptives. This is a rundown of the video we had before which will be pinned here. Uh, so we have two types of contraceptives, hormonal and hormonal. In the hormonal, they have estrogen and progesterone and the progesterone based. So this is one of the progesterone based and it is our long active, uh, long acting contraceptive, which means it can last you three to five years, depending on the one you find. So the one we have here, as you can see, has two rods. So this is a Jardel and it lasts you for five years. So uh, one, how does it work? This works as um, a progesterone-based hormonal contraceptive, which means it prevents you from ovulating. And then the second method uh, it uses to work is that it thickens the cervical mucus and therefore forms a plug so that sperm cannot go up into the uterine cavity. So those are the two mechanisms of action that it has. It is safe for basically anyone who is in the reproductive sexual health age, um, but we have uh, a contraindication in women who have breast cancer or history of breast cancer, uh, women who have history of liver disease, especially one that has been quite severe. And um, there's caution, a bit of caution in women who are hypertensive and it is poorly, keyword, poorly controlled. That is uh, BP is over 160 over 110, uh, but otherwise if it's between the normal range and within good control of your medication, then it is a safe method to use. One of the benefits of using this particular method, one is that once you put it, you forget. So it's one of those good methods where you forget about family planning or contraceptives for five years or three years, depending on the one that you have. And then um, basically safe for everyone, almost everyone. Uh, one of the cons of um, having this type of method, well, it can cause some irregularities in your bleeding pattern. Most women um, will have no period at all. Um, other, other women will have uh, periods of delayed about four months, then trickling for two weeks then disappears for six months and comes back. So it has that irregularity. Other women will have a normal flow, but reduced in quantity. Other women will have um, co continuous trickling or bleeding, especially in the beginning before it resets or it balances well with your body. Um, so that's one of the things you need to know. If at all the bleeding is getting um, irritating because it's minimal but prolonged, if it's getting irritating, the pills we use to balance your hormones out and then you're free to continue using it. So um, I wanted to demonstrate how you can use it or how it is inserted just to demystify some of the things. Um, I think in terms of risks and benefits and, bene and pros and cons, I've pretty much touched on all that. If at all you have any questions, just put them in the comment in case I forgot. Oh yes, headaches. Some women tend to get headaches. Um, if at all that is happening and it's not balancing within six months or so, well and good. We can always see how to optimize optimize you so that you don't have to change the method. If at all it's very irritating as well, we can always remove it. Return to fertility is immediate. So immediately you get this out of your body, uh, most women uh, are ready to conceive almost immediately. So that's another good thing in this particular method. So how to put it? Um, I have my wonderful assistant here who's agreed to be our dummy patient. Uh, so we're not actually going to be inserting it. Um, so one thing you need is when you go for your when you go for your visit, you'll have your doctor or your midwife uh, take you through the whole process. So they're going to guide you through the risks, the benefits, and then they're going to check against you and your profile. For example, uh, if you're obese, if you have previous history of clots and all these things, breast cancer, they're going to actually uh, take you through that, see the safety profile for you, 
So it's important that as you're going for this particular method, you go to a certified um, hospital like ours. <laughs> yeah. Um, but just make sure that you discuss through the entire profile so that you know if it's safe for you. Okay. So when you go there, the first thing that they're going to do is um, after the whole discussion and you've consented, uh, they're going to take an injection of this nature. Yeah, so this is called dignocaine, it's a local anesthetic. We put it on the arm to numb the area before we start. So here we go. Then the next thing we check uh, is the rod. We have to check if one if it's okay, two, you need to check if it's expired or not. The sun is expiring in May 2025, so it's pretty safe. Um, this is for the doctor, they'll check their trucker if it's ready to load and all that. So not your headache um yeah pretty much so it's a sterile procedure so usually we switch to this particular uh, gloves you will look at the arm so which one is your dominant arm the right arm so we prefer putting it on the non-dominant arm not because it will do anything but just to make it easier for you when you're going to work the next day so um at the non-dominant hand we come to the base somewhere here so I like this measuring two and two somewhere here, okay? So once you identify the area, you're going to clean with betadine. Am I allowed to clean you with betadine? Mm -hmm. Okay. So basically we just clean with betadine. Clean it. So just clean the area. This is just to sterilize the area, really. So once that is done, uh, usually we'll put a drip on it. But because this is for demonstration purposes, I'll block you if I if I do so. So I'll just skip that. But we'll put uh, a drip around the area so that it's very, it remains sterile even as we do the rest of the procedure. Then you'll notice your doctor will wear the sterile gloves. And then they will numb the area. So, bit of local. The sun does not have adrenaline or anything for the for the sake of any medical student. No adrenaline, just plain local anesthetic. About two cc should be fine. And then put it in your syringe. Just one I can use. Not really going to demonstrate, but just draw about two cc. That should be about this much. And then we identify the area that we're going to put it on. So in her case, we would put it somewhere like here. So we infiltrate, um, for any medical student, we would infiltrate in this manner. We just go from one point, then you... So from one point, you just um, go in. You always make sure to withdraw to see if there's blood. If there's no blood, then uh, you tilt. Uh, sorry, you infiltrate a bit, put a bit of local, so that the local is spread about, um, the length of this is about 4 centimeters. So you want your local to go that length, and then you tilt to this side, so that it forms a V, okay? So basically that's what we'll do, we'll infiltrate on this side and infiltrate on that side. So you don't have to keep pricking the patient, you just tilt put it on straight on that side, then tilt and go to the other side. If you need more than the 2cc of, uh, of uh, local anesthetic, it's fine. And that's still allowed. So after that, you wait about two to three minutes so that the local anesthetic is set and that it numbs the area. Okay. So once that is done, you make a small cut, very small cut, about 0 0.5 on the area that you have numbed. So we just get a blade like this, but you'll notice your doctor will get a blade like this and just cut exactly where we put the local so that it's not painful for you. And then once that is done, they will take the trocker and load it. So this is our jadel. This jadel is loaded here. Okay. So okay. So how do we put the implant? It's a very simple procedure, usually takes less than 
five or ten minutes. Um, so when you go to your hospital, you'll realize that they'll clean, they'll clean your hand with betadine. It just goes with betadine. This t-shirt ideally would be up there. Thank you. You'll not, you not need to have uh, slept or anything like that. So we just put the betadine. After that, we put the drip around it. Once you put the drip around it, uh, take a needle uh, that is loaded with local anesthetic. So about, you can load about two, can go up to four, no problem. So make sure it's plain local. Uh, this is for any medical student who is preparing for the USMLE or anything like that. So make sure it's loaded with a local anesthetic. How you give your local anesthetic, um, this will be put in. Check to make sure it's not in a blood vessel and then infiltrate, infiltrate. So that um, you notice that there's a wheel forming about um, two or three centimeters um, vertically. Then from there, just retract back, tilt, so that you make a V, and then you also infiltrate that area. So once that is done, um, you will have a small cut. So here's my blade. You notice your doctor will put a small cut at the point where they did the incision somewhere like here so a small cut about 0 0.5 millimeters so that is to allow this area of the trocar to actually enter and you can see the width the diameter is about 0 0.25 so quite a small thing so we open the trocar So this is the trocar, you see it is safe, it's safely put, sorry. The assistant usually will open because this is a sterile area that is non-sterile. So this is what, this is where we load the trocar. You can see it's something very small. And then we pick the jadel, one jadel, and then it is loaded from, from there up until that particular length. And then this is the inserter. Okay, so it just pushes the trocar in once it's inside the patient's hand. So once that is that, as you're loading the trocar, you're giving time for the local anesthetic to work. And then after that, um, it just, from where you had put your local, you make sure that it's numb, just touch the patient, make sure that it's numb, and then you go up. So it, it has to be, it's a subdermal application or it's a below the skin application. So um, just be lifted from where you put and then you go right below the skin. So go below the skin up until where this line meets with where you had started the insertion. And then you come out uh, with your jadel, load it, and then push it in. Up. And that's the first one. Then uh, retract up to this level tilt to where you had put the v go back in uh, put the second jadel in applicate and then come out that's it then from there you just wipe make sure that you can feel the jadel below the hand of the patient you'll also have the patient feel it once you've put in your your elastoplast just have the patient feel to see that it's comfortable and that's it so once it's done the patient will feel one rod and the other rod in a v okay so from time to time they can just keep checking it's there and that's fine so this stays there for five years five good years without any issues unless you get any bleeding irregularities uh we need to review you after about three months just to make sure your bp readings are normal um to check if you're having any issues with um, weight changes uh just check if you're having any issues with headaches and then advise accordingly okay so after that is done you're done put in your elastoplast then put out your sharps and you're good to go Thank you very much. So and once um, once you put the elastoplast, you'll be guided to just feel the rods 
So kindly fill the imaginary roads, they'll be here. Yeah, so that's the first one. And then that would be the second one. And then the last thing that you they're going to do is they're going to give you a card like this one. So this card will write the date we inserted and then the date of removal, which will be calculated as five years from when this was put. And then we'll indicate whether we put in the left or in the right arm. So this helps when you're going to removal, because if you're going to meet a different doctor, or even the same one, uh, five years is a long time. So this will give memory to both you and the, the physician. Also, um, in case of anything and you go for, get an accident or anything and they feel their roads, they'll be able to know what exactly was done if this card is in your pass. Yeah, so that's something else that is good to know. So you can put it in your pass. And then the second card is usually for you to put in a safe place or it can be put in your file. Yeah, keep it safe. Good to go. Thank you very much. And I hope this explains the whole process. As you can see, it's quite short. And um, yeah, it explains the whole process of how, what to do to make sure this is the right method for you. Uh, we have demystified, I hope, um, how it is actually inserted and when you go back to your review. Thank you and see you in the next video. Subscribe, subscribe and share to all your friends and family. Thanks.